Hi guys and welcome to another LPJ Models build video. Today I'm going to build the Hurricane Mark 1 in 172nd by the Polish company Armour Hobby. The Hurricane was slightly overshadowed by the success of the Spitfire in the Second World War, but it remained a sturdy workhorse for the Allied pilots. Before we start, let's have a look inside the box. The kit has some very nice surface detail. The panel lines are subtle and refined. The fabric texture on the fuselage is in scale and the kit comes with a choice of two propellers and spinners and a regular or tropical air filter. This boxing, the expert set, comes with photo etched parts, mainly for the cockpit and wheel bay. It also has some pre-cut kabuki tape paint masks. The decals are printed by Techmod and are in perfect register and look really thin. Four sets of markings are supplied, three RAF Battle of Britain hurricanes from 1940 and one South African Air Force hurricane from 1941. I will build Scheme 3, a hurricane piloted by Pilot Sergeant Josef Frantisek from the combined RAF Polish 303 Squadron. So let's get started with the construction. The construction started in the wheel bay. The locator pins on parts 20 and 21 were too big, so they were removed so the parts would fit. I had to remove some raised detail before I applied the photo etch part here. I used Dulux Materials Rocket Rapid Medium Viscosity Superglue applied with a toothpick for all of the photo etch parts on the model. When I had finished building the wheel well assembly, I decided to add some extra detail with Plus Models lead wire. The wheel well needed to be aluminium colour. I base coated the parts with Mr Hobby GX2 gloss black mixed 50-50 with self-leveling thinners, giving a nice smooth surface for the alclad aluminium I used over it. I built up the aluminium colour in very thin layers. This was then protected by a thin coat of Alclad Aqua Gloss. I applied a heavy coat of AK landing gear wash to the landing gear bay. I made sure to get it in all the nooks and crannies. When it was dry, I carefully removed any excess I didn't want with a cotton bud. The instructions tell you to add the main landing gear now. As I didn't want to damage them during the build, I left them off till later. The cockpit sidewalls had some great detail supplied in photo etch. I had to be really careful not to lose any of the pieces because some were really tiny. The kit seat belts were provided as photo etch parts. They had really nice detail, but they had to be carefully bent to fit the shape of the seat.
Now the main cockpit construction is complete, we can move on to painting. The parts were all sprayed with Mission Models Grey Primer. It goes down really smooth and is nice and durable for further layers. Using a highly thinned mix of Mission Models Black, I pre-shaded the inside of the cockpit. I used Hitaka Orange Line Interior Grey Green Lacquer for the cockpit colour. It's a really good match and the paint goes down quite nicely. I used Vallejo acrylic paints to paint the details in the cockpit. I'm not used to painting this small so it was quite a challenge. The seat belts were painted with a mix of Vallejo English uniform and buff. For this fine work I used a 2-0 Kalinsky sable brush. The buckles were picked out with Dark Star Metallics Pewter, a good approximation of steel. To add some depth in the cockpit, I used the AK Wash for brown and green camouflage. This was applied carefully with a small brush. If I got any where I didn't want it, I used a dry brush and capillary action to take the paint away. With the cockpit painted and weathered, it was time to glue it all together. I did find some parts needed some of the edges trimming by a few mil to get all the parts to fit correctly. I used super glue for most of these parts to make sure the bond was instantaneous and the parts didn't slip out of alignment. When I joined the two halves of the fuselage together, it looked like a bit of a squeeze, so I held them together with tape before I ran an extra thin cement in the joins. The rest of the airframe assembly was really straightforward. I only needed a little filler on the wing roots. Oop, and a little bit underneath the nose. I posed the elevators down a little bit to give some variety to the finished model.
In the kit, you're given the option of transparent navigation lights. To add these, you needed to carefully remove little triangles from the wingtips for them to fit. The inside of the oil cooler was painted with L-clad aluminium. This part was a tight fit and the location pegs needed thinning quite a bit to make the part sit correctly. As I was nearing painting, it was time to mask the cockpit. I find paint masks essential for a tidy paint job. The canopy was glued on with Revel Contactor. It's a clear canopy glue and it leaves no frosting on the parts. It's also fairly easy to remove once it's dry if you've made a mistake. The propeller was supplied in separate parts. Luckily, the location tabs allowed the propeller blades to be positioned at the correct angle with no fuss. To make the canopy look more realistic, it was first sprayed with the interior colour before I applied any more layers. Now it's time to get on with the painting. The whole airframe was primed with Mission Models Grey Primer. Over a coat of Mr. Colour GX2, I used Alclad Aluminium as I wanted to chip through and show the metallic layer underneath. Once I'd finished spraying the Alclad, I used AK Warn effects and made several very light passes over the metal sections of the aircraft for chipping later on. Once the AK Warn effects had dried, I painted the entire model in Mission Models Black as I'm going to black base this model. I thinned Mission Models RAF Underside Sky 60% paint to 40% thinners for the black basing. Randomness is key here. You need to make sure to build up a natural looking finish by varying the opacity of the paint as you build it up. If done carefully, this can look very effective. I then used the Artool Texture Effects stencil with a lightened version of the base coat to add some variety to the finish. I masked off all of the underside and then proceeded to spray the upper surfaces with Mission Models RAF Dark Green in the same manner as I did the underside.
Once again, randomness is key with the black basin. You don't want it to look too regular. Once again I followed up this layer with a lightened version of the base coat sprayed through the Artool texture mask. I always struggle with hard edged camera schemes, but luckily Armour Hobby provide a handy free template on their website. If you like your own template, click the link in the description. The template was printed on heavy A4 card. I then placed a sheet of Artool masking film over the top and cut out the stencils carefully with a fresh blade. Using the instructions as reference, I carefully placed the cutout masks on the model. To keep the finish looking consistent, I sprayed black over the areas that weren't covered by the masks. Because I wanted to chip through to the metal layer underneath, I had to make sure that each coat was really thin. For the second camouflage colour, I used Mission Models RAF Dark Earth. This was also black based carefully and naturally. Once again, I mixed a lightened version of the base colour and sprayed it through the R-Tool stencil. I think this gives a really nice natural looking variation to the paint finish. Now it's time for the moment of truth. I'm really pleased with how the homemade masks came out.
Now it's time to start the chipping. The great thing about using the AK Warn FX is that you can moisten the top layer with warm water, activating the chipping fluid underneath. Then, with a sharpened toothpick, you can chip away the top layer, showing your chosen base colour. In 170 second, it's really easy to overdo weathering or chipping. Carefully with a sharpened toothpick, I attempted to make tiny chips where the aircraft would naturally wear by the use of the crew. I kept this restrained as I didn't want it to look overdone. I also used a fresh 10A blade to make tiny scratches on the surface of the model. I forgot to add the anti-slip walkways, so these were sprayed afterwards. These were carefully chipped with a sharpened toothpick before the paint had fully dried. Before the decals were applied, I sprayed two medium coats of Alclad Aquagloss over the whole airframe to seal the previous work in. The decals were really thin and really nice to use. The decals responded well to setting solution and snuggled down nicely. Once I had applied all the decals, they were sealed in with a coat of Alclad Aquagloss. So with the painting and decals finished, it was time to move on to the weathering. I used the AK panel liner for brown and green camouflage and coated this liberally over the surface of the model.
Once the panel liner had dried, I removed it carefully with a cotton bud. I made sure to wipe it off in the direction of the flow of air on the aircraft to make sure it looked natural. On the underside I used the AK panel liner for blue and grey camouflage, as the green and brown one was too stark. When it was dry I removed it in the same way. Once I was happy with the result, it was time to seal the aircraft for further oil weathering. I used Winsor & Newton Professional Matte Varnish for this, sprayed in two light coats. The first thing I did with the oil paints was to add some dusty mud areas in the wing roots where the crew would have walked. I used a mix of De La Rani Artist Oil Paints, Burnt Umber, Yellow Ochre and Titanium White. The dusty effects were blended in with a brush moistened in white spirit. The key to oil painting is lots of layers and to make sure to apply the effect randomly. As you can see I used a few different shades of brown to keep the effect varied. The blue on the roundels were faded with a mix of ultramarine blue and titanium white. This was carefully blended so the effect was subtle. The centre of the roundel was faded with a mix of cadmium red deep, lemon yellow and titanium white. I added some artificial shading around the edges of some of the panels with a mix of burnt umber and French ultramarine. This was blended in carefully so the panels blended naturally into the aircraft. This can be a great effect to liven up the surface of your model. But be careful because if you overdo it, it can look too forced and unnatural.
With a mix of black, Japanese propeller brown and Mr. Models transparent medium, I sprayed some thin smoky lines to emulate the soot discharge from the ejector casings. This was sprayed really closely at about 15 psi, being careful not to apply too much paint. The exhaust pipes in the kit were good, but they needed a little work. I hollowed out the stubs with a 10A scalpel blade and carefully blended in any unsightly marks with glue. The exhausts were sprayed with a coat of Mr. Hobby GX2 Gloss Black. This is a perfect base for your Alclad colours. I used a mixture of Alclad Copper and Alclad Burnt Iron for the base colour on the exhausts. The ends of the exhaust stubs were then painted with Alclad Pale Burnt Metal to give a heat distressed look. The very ends were given a slightly sooty look with Alclad Jet Exhaust. Once the exhausts were painted, they were coated in Life Colour Liquid Pigment Blue Burned Exhaust. When this had dried, I used a cotton bud and the Life Colour Pigment Remover to burnish off any parts that I didn't want covered. The exhausts were then carefully popped into place. The propeller was a mix of metal and wood. The metal areas were painted with Alclad Aluminium. And for the wooden areas, I used a mix of Mission Models Dunkel Gelb and British Lightstone. This was then sprayed with a light misty coat of AK Warn effects. The spinner assembly was then painted with a mix of Mission Models Black and Japanese Propeller Brown. As the propeller tips are supposed to be yellow, I needed a light base coat for the yellow to show. I used Tamiya Flat White mixed with Cellulose Thinners for this. I then followed it up with Mission Models RLM04. I then carefully chipped away the propeller and the spinner, showing the metal and wood underneath. The undercarriage legs were sprayed Alclad Aluminium over GX2. When this had dried, I followed up with a wash of AK Landing Gear Wash to accentuate the shadows.
It was slightly tricky, but I was able to get the landing gear in place nicely. The final bit of paintwork was to add some exhaust staining. For this I used Mission Models Black, Japanese Propeller Brown and their transparent medium to make a nice transparent dark smoky look. The canopy paint masks were carefully removed with a sharp scalpel blade and a pair of tweezers. For the aerial wire, I used Yushi van der Rosten rig that thing, fixed with super glue. And that's it, the build's complete. I had great fun building the Armour Hobby Hawker Hurricane Mark I. The kit was nicely detailed. Weathering the model was a challenge as I'm used to working 148. I had to be a lot more restrained because of this. I want to thank Armour Hobby for supplying me with the kit and producing a great kit of an iconic aircraft. If you liked the video, please don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. You can also follow my work on Instagram and Facebook. Just search LPJ Models. Thanks for watching.